Hey everybody, it's Miss Faye. This is my world. Welcome back. Um, just on my way to the park, you know, uh, I don't know if you saw my earlier video, but I walk every day. Uh, it's good for the soul and it's good for your physical health. So I encourage all of you ladies to get out and just just walk. It's free and it really grounds you spiritually. It just if you have any kind of worries or whatever it really kind of helps you get beyond that. When I was uh, healing from my narcissistic abuse experience. I walked twice a day. <laughs> I walked in the morning and in the afternoon. And believe me, if you're going through any situation with a narcissist, get out of the house <clears throat> and just walk. And just walk, clear your mind. You see, talk to the universe and let the universe talk to you. All right, so we're headed to the park and then we're going to find us a nice bench and sit down and talk about narcissists in the pulpit. So stay with me now. Okay, everybody, here we are in the park it's a beautiful day so anywho let's talk about uh, narcissists in the pulpit I just want to remind you that I was raised Christian Pentecostal my father was a bishop in the church with a very large following so it's not much you can tell me about the church I don't I don't know. Now, where does this narcissist fit in? <laughs> Many narcissists are pastors. I'm not saying that all pastors are narcissists, but it's the perfect profession for a narcissist. But let's go back. You have to know that a lot of these narcissists came off the street. You see, doing a lot of illegal things like drugs, murder, robbery. Okay, if you check on your pastor, he may have a history of that in his past you see then when he found the church his mind he probably say hell i can make the same money legally so he brings those same tactics that he used in the street to the church where there's a captured audience of gullible people he's the same narcissist but he just changed his clothing from big chains and all of that to a ro ro robe and a cross. And now he's on the pulpit talking to you. You see? He does the same thing. Same thing. He offers you love, love in a sanctuary for all of you that are broken, broken hearted and whatever come into the sanctuary you see that's his way of love bombing you come into the sanctuary and be healed you see but also he is feeding on the adoration from all those people the adoration which he needs to survive okay i had to move my spot because uh the sun uh is going down <laughs> in the West and it's kind of strong today. But anyway, back to this narcissist. 
Now, now, now picture this. He's the narcissist. He always has been. But now he has your trust. Just like he would if you were in a relationship with him. And actually, your pastor, you are in some sort of relationship with him. And uh, you give him your love. You give him your money. You give him your everything. Because you think he is your ticket to a better place in the afterlife. I won't say heaven because all religions might not think that's where they're going or whatever. But you think that's your ticket. So you're going to listen and believe what he is telling you. Okay? But let's go back to religion. To religion. Because religion is an organized an organi an organized institution that is also a business it's an organized institutional business and people miss that the business part and their objective is to make money okay now let, let's look at the narcissist what is his objective? His objective is to get supply. He's always going to need that energy to survive. To survive. Okay? But because he's a narcissist, he really doesn't care about you. He only cares about himself. himself. So everything he does and everything that he's going to do with his congregation is always going to be about him. All right. Now, let me go back again and say, I'm not saying that every pastor out there is a narcissist. But many of them are. Because it's the perfect cover. They have the first lady sitting over there. The first lady. And uh, the first ladies. They've been through so much with this asshole. They know he's he crooked. They know he's not right. But because of the religion, they have to submit to him. Because a lot of the religious teachings tell you to do that. And that's exactly what a narcissist wants you to do anyway. To submit to him. He's the powerful one. He's the one that gets all the adoration. And attention and what you serve him that's what you there for for you to serve him and when he is your pastor look how many people are doing he's got a whole congregation that's serving him it's the perfect situation for the narcissist now here you come along you know you got some troubles you know you want to go speak to the pastor he should have some answers for you because he's the vicar of God, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's the go-between, between you and the Father. So you want to go to him and tell him all of your little personal business and what's going on with you and your husband, your family, and all of that. And he's looking at you, you know, he don't give a damn about you and your problems. He's thinking, now how can I work this to my benefit? I'm going to work this situation to my benefit, you see? Now he might tell you, you know, you know, uh, you know, if you buy this little cloth that I done prayed over, put some oil on bullshit, if you buy this and take this and put this on your head or put this on your chest or what the fuck, all your troubles will go away. Remember, it's a business. It is a business that hides behind faith. It hides behind. It hides behind. That Bible, that Bible, you need to look at, number one, where that Bible came from. 
where did it come from? You see? Where did it come from? Many of us were born into a situation that our families were in this organized religion. An organized religion. So, naturally, we were raised up to follow the family religion. You see? But how many of you have questioned that? You see, and the, the pastor, you know, the pastor is the head of that, that part of the religion, that division of, you know, that particular wherever you go. He's over that flock. So, of course, you trust you trust them. So you'll go in there telling them all of your heartfelt issues, not realizing that he may use this against you. Against you. I've, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to reiterate that uh, I know the church very well, very well. And I've seen pastors get in the pulpit and air out somebody's issues that they have spoken to him in confidence about. You see, and he presents it to the congregation as a teaching tool. The person is embarrassed, you see, but he gets adoration from the congregation by teaching them this lesson. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's what a narcissist does. He uses other people. He takes advantage of other people. You see, he tries to destroy other people. Now, I've even seen pastors decide somebody in their own congregation they don't like. And they will belittle that person and talk about that person. Now, this is the pastor. Do all of those hateful things to get rid of that person because I guess they feel like that person is contaminating the flock. Maybe that person's eyes opened up and they really see what's going on and they're speaking about it or about to speak about it or maybe the pastor is afraid they're going to speak about it. So he gets rid of them. He poisons the congregation against that particular person and gets rid of them. So you sitting up there, dumb, thinking thinking that the person did something because this man of God or whoever the fuck, this man of God is telling you that that person is wrong and needs to repent. When the narcissist the narcissist pastor is working his weed. That's what they do. It's about destroying things, destroying people. Take your mind, controlling you totally. And then that adoration that you give to him, he lives on that. He feeds on that. And the more that he gets, the more that he craves. You see? But he has no empathy for you. He has no sympathy for you. He does not love you. He can't because deep down he does not love himself. That's why the pastor can go around and have sex with the little boys in the church. And even the women that crawl to him telling the pastor all of their problems with their kids and with the husband. Next thing you know, he's got his hand under her dress. That's why these things are happening because the pastor is demonic. He's a narcissist. And you you run on the church. You run on the church. Number one, you running in there because you got these new outfits and you want everybody to see. To see you and your new shit. So, that's why you going. To show off. Sit back. Whatever. But when you go in there and sit, do you actually listen to what the pastor is saying? Do you actually listen to what he's saying? Is it making any sense to you? You see? Now, I've been in several different uh, 
religious settings, Muslims, uh, Universalists, Presbyterians, Baptists, Pentecostal. I haven't been to the Seven Day Adventists. I don't know, you know, what they do other than they come fucking with you when you're trying to relax at home. You see? And that's another subject because I don't even think they God need them to be out harassing people with that bullshit. So, this narcissist, because he cannot love anybody, he's prone to do anything. You don't know how much he's done before he became the pastor. He might have been in prison. And if he was in prison any number of years, he's been dicking those prisoners, the male prisoners that he's been in there with. But the narcissist doesn't consider that. And if he does, when he comes back to church, he prays for repentance and all is forgiven. I even met a fella who he claimed that he was in the special forces in the, in the army. Killed all of these people. Talk about it. Killing all these people. But he says that he, he prayed and he was forgiven for that. I'll tell you something. The universe has a thing called karma. And even if your God has forgiven you for that, the universe is going to make you pay for it. You understand? So there's no way that you can come out here and destroy people's lives and think that you can run off to church and be forgiven of that. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. You see? And you can look around at these people who claim that they've been forgiven, you see, and look at their lives. And it's probably a mess, unless, unless they're working with their demons and they're showing you, you know, all the blitz and the glamour and the bling and everything. But behind the scenes, you don't know what happens behind those closed doors. And I assure you, it's not as happy and pleasant and healthy as you think. It's not that. It's not that. And uh, the pastor, being a narcissist, is a danger. It's a danger because he influences a lot of people with his words and actions. He's got a lot of followers that believe in him. I was looking at a, uh, a show the other day where the pastor gets in, up in front of the congregation and admits that uh, he's gonna resign because he, he committed adultery 20 years ago. Now he probably got up to resign because the people that he did this to found him and say, if you don't resign or tell these people the truth, then we're going to tell it. You know, because they, they don't have a shame or empathy or, you know, all the guilt or all of that to make them want to tell. They don't want to tell. They, they'll take it to the grave because it doesn't mean anything. They don't have a soul. So he gets up and uh, explains to his congregation, and they're all, oh, we love you, Pastor. We love you, Pastor. You know how they do. Like the Billy Graham thing when he even his ass got caught. They get up and they cry, and the congregation sympathizes. You know, we love you anyway, Pastor, and all that. What he had done, he was having sex with an a underage girl from his, uh, from his church. And he never told them that part of it. He just said that he committed adultery 20 years ago. And what happened was that the girl is grown now and her husband probably pushed to let this out because this pastor 
you know, he was growing his congregation, and who knows, he's probably doing with another young girl, you see? But a lot of these things are coming out about these people, but you are still running off to church. I don't get it. I, I, I don't get that. Even the Catholics don't go as much as they used to since they found out what their priests are doing. <laughs> you don't need any man to tell you what's good and what's not. What gives him the credentials to tell you what's good and what's not? When you have your own intuition to tell you that. You don't need to run off to church for him to tell you that. Plus, if you need the word, read it for yourself. A lot of you are not going to do that. You don't want to read nothing. You don't want to read. So you'd rather for him to tell you his interpretation of either what he read or what he heard. That's right. I went to a service one time where the whole, the whole uh, message was about some silly show he saw on TV or some song some rapper rapped about. The whole message was about that. What the hell? He has no message for you. The answer to all your questions are inside you. Love yourself. Don't look for anybody else to give you love to make you feel better about yourself. And that's why people are running off to these religions, listening to these high-powered narcissists, you know, that's duping you, whether, they're, whether you go to their um, churches or whether you see them on TV or radio or whatever, they're asking for money. They're asking for money because it's a business, and a lot of these shysters were getting money off the streets, whether it was drugs or whatever, whatever it was. And they decided, let's do it at the church because the church is like a free area. There's no taxes. You know, the police ain't going to come busting down the door and uh, anything like that. But they can get the money. It's safe money and more money that's non-taxable money. So it's big business for the narcissist, very big business for the narcissist. You need to be aware of that. You need to be aware of that. Quit putting your faith in man, number one. Quit putting your faith in man. You see? And, you know, another thing, when you go to church, now your pastor, he's a narcissist. You can see it. You've heard, you've heard whisperings about stuff he's doing in the background, but you don't, you know, he the pastor. He the pastor. Okay. So now he is delivering a holy message to you. I don't know how a demon can deliver a holy message to anybody. You see? But anyway, he's delivering the message to you. You see? And you, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Preach. At nine, nine times out of ten, you're not even listening to what he's saying. You are wrapped up in the emotion because there's a spirit in the place. There's a spirit in the place that this demon is bringing out to you. And so, next thing you know, you quivered and shaking and running all over the church and shouting and doing all that bullshit, and you think you're in a Holy Spirit. You're not. It's an evil spirit in the church that has taken over, and you're going there every Sunday, Wednesday night, whatever, to feed that demon. 
to feed that demon. Wake up, people. I know you think some of the things that I'm saying are ridiculous. But if you listen and open your eyes, just give it a chance and see if, it's, if I'm wrong. You can know a person by their works. Not by what they look like or what they have or what they say, but by their works. What kind of trail are they leaving behind? You see? And nobody look nobody looks at that. Nobody looks at that. I know so many because I come from a long generational line of preachers and pastors and healers, all of that. I come from that. You see? That I see the pattern. I see the pattern pattern. They go after the gullible people, the people who are in distress, the people who need something, the people who who feel like they need to be redeemed for their sins because we were all born in in sin and and they need this. Who told you that? Who who told you that? Think about it. Where'd that come from? That you was born in sin. I think it came from the Bible. I think that's where it came from. And where did the Bible come from? In the first place. I know as black people, we sure damn sure ain't bring it out from Africa. <laughs> but if any if anybody says anything and I'm going to say this to us black folks. Anybody says anything about their Bible, you are ready to kill them. Because you defend, you defend something that was pushed upon you with a gun at your head. People, narcissists, are everywhere and they are influencing your mind and just breaking you down and breaking you down so that they can emotionally change you. They can actually change you into something else, something that you were not meant to be. You see? But just just remember the pastor is there. He's the CEO of this business. He, he's the director of the, unless you're in a very large denominational organization where the CEO is someplace and then, you know, all these sectors are different places, but every place has a director, a director. And that director already has his objective, his objective. The church has to make a certain amount of money. Church has to survive. You know, you are a member of an organization. And I guess when you go in there and you put your offering in, that's your dues to be part of this narcissist organization. And, you know, he don't treat you all bad. He gives you entertainment. You go there, the choir singing, you see? Choir singing probably. His boyfriend is the choir director, you see? They singing and got you all hooped up, whatever. So he give you that feel good feeling, you see? And then the narcissist, he'll come out and do his thing. He'll deliver you the message. Deliver you the message. And nine times out of ten is some bullshit that he took his time on Saturday and went through his Bible, pulled out his papers and say, I'll, I'll talk to them about this. Or something that he saw on TV. I'll talk to them about this. I'm telling you, these people 
came off the street. These people have done some of the most terrible things to men that you can imagine. And they're standing in front of you, delivering you a message. And you just eating it up, just delivering you because they're hiding behind that cross. They're hiding behind that. It's a false, it's a false thing. People, ladies, wake up and you are the most gullible because the church is full of us, full of women, more women than men in the church. More women than men in the church. You see, a man, most of the men, they'll come back to church when they get too old, when they've done all their dirt, and then they want to be redeemed, so then they come crawling back to church. That's why you don't have that many young men in there. You know, the young men in church, because some woman and dragged their ass there. But the old men, you know, most of them are there because they, they want to be redeemed. Redeemed for all of the trash they've done in their lives. So ladies, stop going into and tell all of your business to the pastor. Stop doing that. Because he's not sympathizing with your situation. He's trying to figure out, now how is this going to benefit him? You see? How's it going to benefit him? Whether he tries to convince you to uh, bring your husband into the fold if he's not already there, that just means more money coming in on Sunday morning. <clears throat> Especially if he can get your husband, because like I said, uh, it's mostly young men in the young, you know, younger young men where their mothers are dragged them in there. And the older men that are there are there for redemption. Or he's looking at you sexually. And that's happened one too many times. You know, the women go in there talking to this narcissist about, you know, the terrible things the husband might be doing or their problems or, you know, and the next thing he wants to do, let, well, sister, let's pray. Sister, you know, let's pray. Maybe you can put your head down here between my legs while we're doing that. You understand? Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Don't, don't be such a believer just because he's standing in the pulpit. When I was, when I was out there, I dated a lot of ministers. That had wives. And I would see them get out of my bed and run right up to the pulpit. So, ladies, I'm only sharing this with you so you don't make the mistakes that I made. You see? Now, I'm celibate. I'm celibate. See? You see? And I've been celibate for a couple of years. But make no mistake now, I don't want it to sound like I don't like men. I love men, always have. But I am no longer willing to put up with the nonsense. And you shouldn't either. Okay? So I think I've rambled on long enough. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope that I've said something that will make you, even, even if it makes you think about it, think about it. I'm hoping that it's information that will help you to avoid any heartbreak or disappointments. So thank you again and hope to see you next time.